Welcome, dear colleagues. I am Ricardo Pampena. In this podcast, we are going to talk about difficult to recognize melanomas. What does we mean with difficult to recognize? Actually, this issue can be declined in different ways, since difficult to recognize could be intended as simulators, featureless, micromelanomas, and so on. Let's see some examples. These are melanomas simulating basal cell carcinomas. However, here you can see a melanoma simulating a seborrheic keratosis. Here, you have a very small, tiny melanoma, which is the smallest I ever seen in my life. However, what we'll do in the following minutes is to focus on uncommon melanoma variants. And these variants are indeed, by definition, difficult to recognize, since only few cases have been described in the literature so far. To fill this gap, we recently published a systematic review, including all the published cases of uncommon melanomas, 433 from 62 studies, plus new 56 unpublished cases. In this podcast, we'll cover in particular the following variants for which some typical clinical dermoscopic criterion was found, pigmented epithelioid melanocytoma and animal type melanoma, desmoplastic, nevoid, nested, spitz, varicus, and melanotic melanoma. Reported near the name is the number of cases included in the systematic review. This is to give you an overview of these melanoma variants. As you can see, most of cases are pigmented or heavily pigmented, simulating a blue, common, or spitz nevi. Other uncommon variants are typically hypopigmented or completely amelanotic, by definition, or crust, thus simulating cutaneous carcinomas or seborrheic keratosis. Let's start with the pigmented epithelioid melanocytoma and the animal type of melanoma. These two variants represent the edges of a spectrum of low aggressive melanomas, histologically characterized by pleomorphic heavily pigmented cells, called pigment synthesizing melanomas. PEM is indeed classified as a melanocytic tumor with low malignant potential while animal type is a clear-cut melanoma histologically, but with a more indolent behavior than common melanoma variants. Both PEM and animal type melanoma, melanoma usually appear as heavily pigmented papules, mainly located on the head and neck and limbs. Comparing PEM to animal type melanomas, we found that the former was generally indistinguishable from a blue nevus, displaying a homogeneous blue-black pattern on dermoscopy. And the latter was frequently characterized by peripherally located additional criteria, such as a typical network, ulceration, irregular pseudopods, or streaks, and dots. Desmoplastic melanoma represents less than 4% of melanomas and usually appears as a papule or a nodule on a chronically sun-damaged skin, with head and neck being the most common site. Histologically, a dermal proliferation of spindle fibroblast-like cells may be observed, with a stromal collagen load greater than 90% of tumor mass by definition. A patch on the infiltrate also represents a diagnostic clue. Upon dermoscopy, pure desmoplastic melanomas display a scar-like appearance with a homogeneous pinkish background with white structures and atypical vessels. Mixed forms also exist, accounting almost for 50% of cases. These are associated with a junctional lentigo malignant-like in situ component, which can be easily recognized up under dermoscopy, usually hiding the deeper desmoplastic component. A few words on nevoid melanomas, uh, which represent a largely heterogeneous group of melanomas histologically simulating nevi. Dermoscopically, 
Four variants were described in an LES study published in 2015. The nevus like similar to a papillomatous nevus, a melanotic, multi-component, and a mixed uh, or a specific. The nested melanoma of the elderly typically appears on the trunk and lower limbs of elderly people, as suggested by the name. It might be considered as a subgroup of nevoid melanoma. However, it deserves distinct classification because of the peculiar histological and dermoscopic appearance. Large, super, large superficial nests of typical melanocytes are indeed a clue of nested melanoma, corresponding to large irregular globules of endermoscopy. Specifically, two dermoscopic patterns were described multi-component and the globular asymmetric. Spitz melanoma usually appears as a pigmented or non-pigmented macular papule, clinically and dermoscopically simulating Spitz and the red nevi. As you can see in this slide, the classical dermoscopic patterns of Spitz nevi are frequently seen in Spitz melanoma, even though a multi-component pattern is more common. Verrucous melanoma is a rare variant histologically characterized by prominent epidermal hyperplasia and verrucous surface, simulating a squamous cell carcinoma or seborrheic keratosis. It usually appears as a pigmented papule, mainly located on the lower limbs and may be correctly diagnosed only when classical melanoma dermoscopic criteria may be seen at the periphery of the lesion. To conclude, a melanotic melanoma is not exactly a histopathological variant. However, it is a group of poorly pigmented melanomas appearing as pinkish macules or papules. In absence of the classic pigmented melanoma criteria, irregular and polymorphic vascular pattern becomes increasingly important as well as the presence of whitish scar-like areas. Together with the presence of this criteria, the absence of um, dermoscopic features referring to basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, or benign skin lesions should be considered. A dermoscopic score for uh, hypopigmented melanoma was proposed by Menzies in 2008. However, the diagnosis of fully melanotic lesions still represents an issue. New strategies based on the evaluation of the prevalent criterion and on artificial intelligence seem to be promising. Thanks a lot for being by my side in this travel through uh, difficult to recognize melanoma variants.